All right, welcome back to the channel where today I'm going to be talking about the first of four secret projects by Brandon Sanderson himself, Tress of the Emerald Sea. Now, when I first heard and reacted to with several other booktubers that Brandon Sanderson, the madman himself, had written a bunch of novels in his spare time during COVID lockdown, uh, I was super excited and I immediately backed the Kickstarter. Little did I know that that Kickstarter would go on to be, what was it now, like the greatest Kickstarter ever, and it made a stupid amount of money. Um, having said that, it was awesome because I get to take a gamble on a few, you know, potential duds or excellent books that I believe all have to do with Cosmere. They're all going to follow various characters that I pretty sure are not like mainstays of the other stories and that was certainly true with tress of the emerald sea which by the way i this is like the perfect kind of hardcover for me is when the artwork and the cover is just directly on the hardcover itself and there's no dust jacket anything like that this is one of the most quality uh feeling books that i've ever held Honestly, they put a ton of work in, so hats off to Sanderson and Dragonsteel. Uh, I you probably I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a, a World Hoppers thingy mabobber that's got Hoyt on it, and there's a Vin pin and like a Trust sticker or some something of sorts, and also a super high quality bookmark that came with it. So this book really caught me off guard because I had no idea what to expect. Um, I'm gonna put this down because it's kind of heavy. It's also illustrated, by the way, which is nice. The illustrations are lovely. This book caught me off guard because my early um, reactions to it based on Discord discussions and other people reading it was that it. I thought I was going to hate it. Uh, I don't generally like seafaring tales. The main character didn't sound super interesting to me, and it just it didn't feel like it was going to be something that I would enjoy. So I was sort of thinking, oh, no, did I just spend a bunch of money on these books? And I'm not going to like them. Um, and happily, I was proven very wrong because this book is delightful. So what this book is, is this is following Tress, our main character of the Emerald Sea, as it were. And she lives on the rock. It's basically what is described as sort of this desolate, almost completely isolated island out in the middle of nowhere. She's not very familiar with the rest of the world. This turns into what would typically be a male protagonist going to rescue his princess that has been captured and put in a tower. You flip that on its head because you have Tress, who her love interest, Charlie, is taken by an evil sorceress, and their communications to each other end up stopping, and she figures out that he has been taken captive, and she's trying to get him back. So that is the crux of the story. The interesting narrative pull to this story is that it's told by Hoyd. And if you are familiar with the Cosmere at all, you're pretty familiar with who Hoyd is. He's a very interesting and witty character. He can be a lot of fun. Uh, he can also be, at least for me, sort of annoying because sometimes I don't gel very well with Sanderson's humor. And it's pretty hit or miss here. But as a narrative structure, I thought it was really intriguing and interesting that Hoyd is not only in this story, but he's also the storyteller. And take that with a grain of salt because who knows if he's embellishing in certain areas or not. He breaks the fourth wall plenty of times throughout this text as well, which sometimes is fun and interesting. Sometimes it is a little bit of I'm teaching you a lesson, reader, so pay attention to something that you should pay attention to in the real world. That's fine. The message is always a good positive message. Sort of silly for the story, if you ask me. But overall, I actually really enjoyed the story of Tress and the Emerald Sea. Um, like I said, I'm generally not a seafaring tale kind of person. I don't love pirates. I don't love being at sea for the majority of my story, but it was actually a lot of fun and it was surprisingly heartfelt and humorous. And it was overall just a very lighthearted, I guess you could even say possibly geared toward, toward a younger audience, but it was just a very enjoyable fun adventure to go on there weren't too many twists or turns or crazy sander lanches that you would come to expect from his epic fantasies whether it be mistborn or stormlight archive it's a much smaller scale a much smaller scope in a world that we are not familiar with 
but also what he does is he sprinkles in a lot of Cosmere nods. And that's super cool for those of us who have read everything else in the Cosmere because you will pick up on several things in this book that are outright direct, hey, we're talking about this thing that happened in another book and then some other nods to other things in the Cosmere as well. And I find that to be a lot of fun. I'm sort of in a love-hate relationship with Brandon Sanderson's humor and the way that he writes funny characters. Um, some of it is genuinely funny and makes me laugh out loud. Some of what Light Song <laughs> said in Warbreaker had me laughing out loud. I love Wit as a character. I gen generally find Hoyd amusing. Some of the things that are said in this book weren't my style of comedy, but again, he's sort of up and down for me. Uh, the, the most down I've ever been on his humor is Wayne from <laughs> Mistborn Era 2. Want to see my hat? Because the hat thing is just played out. It's not funny. Stop it. But overall, this book, you know, humor and all was very enjoyable. And honestly, I found a lot of humor just in the setup and things that happened in the book and people completely misinterpreting or misunderstanding who Tress is or who they think she is or assume that she is. All of that stuff was genuinely funny and it made for an interesting and fun uh, journey when you get these other characters that are so convinced that Tress is one thing or another and that's always funny. Hoyd making poop jokes is not funny. See what I'm saying? Um, but overall, again, it was more positive than negative for sure. I'm sort of being nitpicky, but I genuinely like this book. It was super uh, fun and pleasant to read. And it's not, you know, not everything these days has to be super dark and depressing, full of gray characters. Like, this was just a good, fun, light read, and I enjoyed it a lot. I don't know how it's going to play into the greater Cosmere since Sanderson apparently is leaning heavily into the Cosmere now, and I have not read The Lost Metal yet. I will get to it, but I've heard that that is the most Cosmere book that ever Cosmered. This has some, you know, sprinklings of it, and I'm genuinely curious to see how this plays into the larger world, if it does, because they definitely make mentions of some things here that we've seen in other stories, and the fact that it has Hoyt in it, you know, maybe he's just telling this to someone in another world and this is just a story that he wanted to tell or maybe we'll see Tress again. I don't I don't really know what to expect from how this will play into everything. So wrapping this all up, I mean, it has a lot of what you come to expect from Sanderson. He is going to mix in a lot of humor. He is going to mix in uh, references to other things that happen in his world that he's created. He's always good for making some interesting characters. His writing is super efficient and I... I like his prose. I like the way that he writes. Um, he definitely takes some liberties of this book, and it's definitely written in a slightly different way than some of his other writings, and I think he just kind of had fun with this. Like, he just sat down, and I believe in the back of the book he references, you know, Princess Bride. I felt a little bit of Pratchett here and there, just in, in the approach to how he was creating scenarios and situations and some of the dialogue that happens. No, I don't think that he's on the level of Pratchett when it comes to humor and um, just general wit in his writing, but I could see what he was going for and it mostly worked. So overall, I did really enjoy the book. I think it was fun and it's definitely worth your time. It's worth reading. It's not overly long. It's not some, you know, 1200 page epic fantasy stormlight book. This is definitely something you could read in a couple of days and it's just a good time. So I highly suggest that you read it if you haven't already. I know I'm probably one of the last people to talk about this on BookTube, but I did finally, uh, get around to recording this and like I said it was just a, it was a good time and it helps that the book is gorgeous it'll live on my shelves up there amongst what is now just going to be a Sanderson shelf because as soon as I add four more books to that thing it's going to be full so Sanderson is going to slowly take hold of my bookshelves in the way that he is taking hold of Kickstarter and the fantasy genre as a whole so that's my review for dress go read it highly recommend it until next time